Before creating a QSort filter proxy model between our own model and the view, let's create a user interface in Qt Designer. Fire up the designer and create an empty window. Remove the menu bar, remove the status bar, and scale the window to a desired size. Since we're going to do filtering, we need a way to specify what to filter with a text. We're going to use a simple QLine edit for that, so drop a QLine edit in the window. We also need a QTree view to display our hierarchical data structure. Instead of spawning a QTree view at runtime, we will actually dock one inside our window. So drag and drop a tree view into the window. And then finally, wrap this up in a vertical layout. Let's also rename our controls. I'm going to rename the main window to UI main window, the central widget to UI central widget, the line edit to UI filter, and the tree view to UI tree. And finally, I'm going to drop a custom style sheet that I've been working on. It's not released yet but will be in the near future, so you'll get a chance to see a sneak peek of it. It's a dark style. Uh, style sheet, paste, OK. This is how it looks like. And as I said again, it's not done, it doesn't support most of the controls yet, but I've been working on it, and it will be released in the near future, and you'll get a chance to play around with it. So save this now at the desired location. There are two ways to load a designer-made UI. It's either by generating a Python file and importing it, or loading the inheritable classes at runtime. We will do the latter. And to do that, we need to import the module called UIC, which stands for User Interface Compiler, which again belongs to the PyQt4 package. So import UIC. The UIC module contains a method called load UI type. We will provide the file we saved out from the Qt Designer to this function. UIC load UI type. I called mine tutorial05. Tutorial. 05 UI. This method returns the form class and the base class, which we need to derive from and create a new window. A base class and a form class is form class is returned from this function. So let's create a new class that derives from that. I'll call this tutorial window tutorial 05 suits well derived from form and base and in the constructor we need to call the superclass constructor of the base class pass the parent to it and then we also need to call the setup UI method that gets generated by load UI type. This actually initializes all our controls placed in the Qt Designer. So we got our class ready. Let's create it. And let's call show. But before running this, I'm gonna change the style to clean looks because that's the most compatible style with my style sheet. And Let's remove the tree view here. We don't need to generate one at the runtime anymore. We don't need to print the root node. And we don't need to set model. We don't need to call set model on the old tree view. And we don't need to insert anything. Let's also move all those up to our class constructor. And let's also remove the model to our constructor. And if you remember, I gave the name UI tree to our tree view. So to access it, we, c we type self UI tree set model with the model. And if we run this now, we should, get we, should, we should get the same result as before, but inside our own window now. So when I run this, I get this with all the nodes correctly. 
Now our goal is to write something here and let the text filter out all the nodes in our tree view. Let's work on that now with a queue proxy model. Alright, we are ready to create and use a queue sort filter proxy model. So let's create one. Self proxy model is cute GUI queue sort filter proxy model. Now we have a proxy model. Remember when I said earlier that the proxy model needs to be in between the view and the data model, like so. View, proxy model, so it can do its processing, and then we have the data model. So basically, instead of hooking our model, this one, directly into the view, we will hook it into the proxy model and then take the proxy model and hook it into the view. Let's do that. First, we need to hook the model, the data model, into the proxy model. We do that by calling set source model on the proxy model with the model. So now we've taken the model and we've hooked it into the proxy model. This part is done. This is left. Now we take the proxy model and hook it into the view. That's it. The binding is done. Now the proxy model is in between the data model and the view. I'm just going to change the models into protected members. Alright, so all that's left to do is a call to set filter reg x method with a string. But let's add a few more items before filtering out stuff. So insert lights at position 0, we want to insert 10 lights and we want it to be in the root so we specify no parent. Now, when we call proxy model set filter reg x with a string to it, it will filter everything that doesn't match that string or doesn't contain that string. So if we write write pirate leg here, let's first run this without. You see that we have a ton of objects, a lot of lights. Now when we apply the filter with write pirate leg, it will only show those two because they contain the text write pirate leg and if we would write light in it it would filter out everything else except the lights now instead of hard coding the filterer let's use our line edits current text this is our line edit and we gave it the name UI filter Oops, I'm launching FX Composer by mistake. Anyhow, we will utilize the signal and slot system of the Qt framework to do this. A line edit emits the signal called text changed whenever the text it holds is changed by the user. That signal also holds a parameter with the current text. So, if we would connect that signal into the function called setFilterRegEx that we just removed, it will automatically set the new filter text whenever we edit the filter field. And to connect that signal, text change signal, we have to write this Qt core, Q object, connect, it's a static method. We want to connect the signal of UI filter. Which signal do we want to connect? We want to connect the signal called text changed which also has the parameter of type QString and who's the receiver? It's our proxy model and which function will receive it or which slot it's gonna be set filter reg exp. So now whenever the UI filter emits the signal text changed with the parameter QString it will automatically pass that QString into setFilterRegExp which receives a QString as well. 
that's what the signal slot system is about you connect two widgets together so they communicate independently so you don't have to do anything let's run this and try it I'm gonna write something here light you see it filters automatically left femur if we expand this as soon as I write femur the child disappears and if we would try to filter left tibia because the parent is gone so is the child so now we have a filter our next goal is to implement a sorter right pirate leg awesome <coughs> so little work for a filter let's quickly implement sorting all we have to do is call set sorting enabled on our UI tree so let's do that self UI tree set sorting enabled true make no mistake though if we had no proxy model in between this wouldn't work let's run it and see it first sorting works as expected now if we disconnect the proxy model and use the data model directly directly with the view this will not work and to prove it I'm gonna show it so I've disconnected the proxy model I'm gonna set the model to the data model let's run this now and something's wrong set mode should be model now the controller shows that it is sortable but because nothing provides a sorting algorithm nothing is sorting the sorting algorithm is provided by the proxy model which is of type q sort filter proxy model so there you have your proof you need a q sort filter proxy model to sort and filter so let's remove this and this and go to the q documentation and check for properties that might be useful dynamic sort filter let's check it this property holds where the proxy model is dynamically sorted and filtered whenever the contents of the source model change the default value is false I think it should be true so I'm gonna set it to true self proxy model set dynamic sort filter true let's check for other properties that might be useful filter case sensitivity this property holds the case sensitivity of the QregX pattern used to filter the contents of the source model. By default, the filter is case sensitive. That's very disturbing, and I'm gonna change it to case insensitive. And it's found in the Qt namespace, which matches this in PyQt. Self proxy model set filter case sensitivity to Qt case insensitive. So when we run this now, if I write light with capital capital letters, it's still gonna filter out correctly. Not so disturbing anymore. Right, pirate leg, perfect. And we can still sort ascending and descending. And that's how you use QSort filter proxy model. If QSort filter proxy model is not enough for your needs because you need a different logic or process to be done by the proxy model then you should consider subclassing the abstract class called Qt GUI Q abstract proxy model and implement that the behavior you're after I won't go through it because I can't come up with anything at the moment but if you want to implement a different behavior on the existing sorting and filtering algorithms provided by QSort filter proxy model you can always subclass it and re-implement some of the virtual methods. We're done now. It was a short tutorial which I expected it to be also. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Stay tuned for more model view programming tutorials for PyQt. Next tutorial will cover QData widget mapper class that allow us to make small property grids to edit the individual data or selections in our models. The editors are created in Qt Designer. See you next time and best regards. Happy coding. Bye.